Welcome to Just Christ Ministries Bible Study. Today is Wednesday, March the 8th. My name is Freda Richmond, and I am your facilitator for the evening. Before we get started, I just want to open up in a word of prayer. Father God, we just ask you right now to come into this Bible study lesson, God. We thank you for your presence. Your word says when two or more gather, God, that you are in the midst. And although we are not physically in front of each other, God, we thank you for the opportunity to leverage technology when it works and when it doesn't work <laughs> but we thank you for the opportunity to utilize it god for those that are joining us via facebook live or via youtube whatever your preference we thank you for coming into and tuning in to bible study again my name is Freda richmond and i consider myself a servant leader and the word says the greatest among you shall be a servant and that is in Mark 9, 35. And I thank God for the opportunity to serve. This is where I have been able to sharpen a lot of my tools that have served me well in my professional career. It all started on the battlefield and the learning grounds of the church. So I thank God for this opportunity to just give back some of the things that God has given to me and that opportunity to share with you. Now, those of you that know me know that I definitely have a preference not to be on camera. So I thank God for this opportunity to share with you via a presentation and utilizing my voice and a little background music as we go through our Bible study lesson together. I have a question. And it's a rhetorical one because no one can answer me unless you want to put in a chat box, of course. But are you winning? Are you winning? Would you consider yourself a winner? Are you running around hashtag winning throughout this game of life? I can't say at all times that I was winning. I can't say that at all times I considered myself the winner. It's interesting when you think about winning, you think that there would be someone who comes in first, second, third, fourth, fifth, but you could win a race of one about your own perspective and you're changing your perspective about what it means to win. So as we go through this lesson today, I just want you to really think about and ask yourself, are you winning? And what does that look like for you? And what does the word have to say about that? I'm gonna encourage you to don't wait till the battle is over. Shout right now. Shout victory in your situation. Put on a spirit of praise for the heaviness that you may feel for whatever it is that you're going through. You know, I have found in um, my darkest times, opening up my mouth and allowing myself to just moan and cry it out or shout it out. There is something that happens. Um, and for those of you that go to concerts and go to um, sports uh, shows and, you know, any place where you are in a space where you, it's allowed for you to, to, to yell and shout. There's something about the camaraderie, the release, the, the energy that comes when you just allow yourself to shout. So I'm going to give you permission to shout. Shout now. Shout loud. Shout proud. Shout from your belly. Allow it to come out. Project it out. You know, whatever you need to say to God, shout it out. Shout out your praises. Shout out Thank you. Shout out your hallelujahs. Whatever it is that's coming into your spirit, don't wait until you get to the finish line. Shout right now. Shout in the midst of whatever it is that you're going through. That's going to be really important when you think about what are some of those tools that you're going to use to get you through this process. I want you to refer to the word. 
And the word says that it is going to rain on the just and the unjust alone. Remember, sun and rain helps flowers grow. You got to have both. There's no way we're going to walk through this life and it's always going to be a beautiful sunny day. I remember last week they were projecting that we were going to get all this snow in Chicago and we were all hankering in and getting ready for it. And you know who got more snow than Chicago? L.A. And they were freaking out with a little bit of snow that they got because you know why? It does not snow there. They're like, we cannot believe that it's snowing here. When was the last time it snowed? They were so unprepared for the possibility of snow. And I lived a little bit in the South and I can attest that anytime anything looked like snow, sleet, anything harder than rain, the whole town was shut down because they were just not prepared for that. Don't find yourself in a situation where you're not prepared for things not to go the way that you anticipate them to go. God says we are going to get the same things that everybody else gets in this world. We're going to experience it. It's all about your perspective and how you handle those things. How are you going to turn that around? How are you going to handle the fact that it's raining? Are you prepared for the rain? Are you walking out with your umbrella? You know, in Chicago, hey, you never know what the weather's going to bring, but we all have to be prepared. Do you have a pair of boots in your car? You know, anytime that it's, it's getting ready for winter season, I make sure that my car is fully stocked and prepared. You know, I have some cat litter back there or I have some salt back there. I have a, in my trunk, I make sure that I have a blanket, um, some jumper cables, some de-icer, all of those things, you know, a snow brush, a broom, a shovel. You never know. And hey, you may have need something to put down for dips to hold on to your parking space. So you never know what you're going to need to be prepared. But are you prepared is the question. And I think as people of God, let's not walk around being unprepared for the fact that it is going to rain at some point in our situation. It is not always going to be sunshines and lollipops. Sometimes we are going to get the stuff at the bottom of the barrel and we're going to have to figure out how to deal with that. And this is when I want you to refer to the word. Remember that all things work together. All things, not some things, all things work together. For them who are called, who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. That's Romans 8, 28. So if you remember that all things are working, all things are working. Then when you're in a situation, you're stopping and saying, okay, God, so this is going to work out for my good. So if I know that this is going to work out for my good, well, then and I'm not going to let this take me under. This situation is going to be something that you are going to help me get through. And I'm going to get to the other side of it. Whatever it is that I need to learn from this, I'm going to learn and I'm going to push and move myself forward. The word also says, that the last shall be first and the first shall be last. So for all of us trying to jump outside and jump on top of each other and get to the front of the line and all the rest of those things, remember, remember what the word says in Matthew 20, 16, that the last are going to be first. So if you feel like you're in a defeated space, remember at some point when this is all over, when the battle is done, you're going to be victorious. You're going to be at the front of the line. And all of these things that's happening in your life and in these situations are just moving you closer to God. It is your dependency on God and to making sure that God is the answer to all the things that are troubling you. No test, no testimony, no test. No testimony. What does that mean? You know, how are you digesting that? Where, where are your testimonies coming from? Why is it important for you to have a testimony? As people of God, we have to encourage each other in this Christian walk. And we can only do that through the words of our testimonies. People are seeing you walk that walk and talk that talk. They need to see the things that God is doing for you so they can believe that God will do it for them. Now, I, I, 
I can say that things happen in our lives that we're not ready to share with other people, but that's okay. But remember, no test, no testimony. So at some point, you got to get to the other side of whatever it is that you're going through. When it's raining, that mountain time, when you're going, trying to go up that mountain instead of climbing down that mountain, remember that. Speak the word. Come on and speak it. The word says, do not be anxious about anything, in, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. That's in Philippians 4 and 6. Don't be anxious for nothing. I remember when I got to the space and place when I was able to say, you know what? I'm not making this decision right now. If I feel pressured or pushed or pulled, I'm going to wait until God says, which way am I supposed to be going? This is the last one. This is the best deal. Get it now. Don't get it at all. Then I'm going to have to miss out because I don't want to be anxious for it. If it's what God has for me, it's for me. And so that means it's going to come in my appointed time, in my appointed space. Now, I can tell you there have been times where I have prayed for something and my prayers aligned with what God wanted for me at that appointed place and that appointed time. And that was a wonderful thing to be able to experience that and see it and watch it come full circle. But there have been times where that has not happened. But I still have to remember that what God has for me is for me. Remember that you speak it. You have to begin to speak those things into your life. Speak those things that are not as if they are. Remember that death and life are in the power of your tongue. So if you're speaking that you're sick, if you're speaking that you're broke, if you're speaking that you're tired, if you're speaking that you're defeated, then that stuff is going to come to pass. Don't let your natural eye dictate what's happening with you in your life. I'm going to speak life into this situation. It may not look the way that I think it's supposed to look, but this is how I want it to look, right? So I'm going to speak it and I'm going to continue to speak it until I see it come to pass. And it will happen. And remember that my God and our God will supply every need that you have according to his riches and glory. That's in Philippians 4.19. So if we know that he's going to supply not some things, but everything that we need, that we need. So let's emphasize on what we need. Because sometimes I think we put those things that we want onto God. He's going to supply your every need according to his riches and glory. We know that it will be silly for us to give the keys to our car to a child who has no driver's license, who don't know how to drive. First thing you don't do is get in the car and crash it. And then we're going to be looking like, oh no, my car is gone. Well, you gave it to someone who wasn't prepared for it. God is not going to give us something that we're not prepared to be ready for. I remember when um, I was in church and, and I saw a lady, she was writing a check and uh, for her tithes and offerings. And oh, it had a whole bunch of zeros. Oh my goodness, it had a whole bunch of zeros. And I was giving my little $25. And I said, man, God, I can't wait to be able to give you something like that. Because you know why? If that's 10% of what you gave her, I can only imagine what's on the other side of that. But you know how hard it is to write a check with a whole bunch of zeros, even if God is giving it to you? That's a hard thing to do. When God is saying, hey, I want you to, to sow a seed and do this and do that. And it's costing you. Maybe it's costing you a little more than that 10% that God is giving you. Maybe God is asking for you to sacrifice. You have to put yourself in a position. I started paying $25 faithfully, which led to $50 faithfully, which led to that $100 faithfully, that led to that $150, which led to that $200. But when you get into those thousands of dollars, because in your mind, you start to say like, okay, God, I know that's 10%. Now I want to give you yours, but you know what I can do with $1,000? You know what bill I can pay with that? 
I'm going to tell you, when you become faithful over the things that God has given you, and when he blesses you to be a blessing to other people, especially financially, or to be a blessing to your church home, or to sow your seeds, pay your tithes give your offerings. He will supply every need. I cannot tell you how many years I have had clothes. They have just not outworn themselves. A lot of stuff I just have to give away because I'm tired of seeing myself wearing them year after year. Nothing wrong with them. Still in style, still looking good. But I'm like, man, God, you have really let this, whatever it is, fill in the blank, last a really, really long time. And I'm grateful for that. And I'm thankful for that, you know, because he will supply all of your needs, all of your needs according to his riches and glory. So you have to remember that if you have a need for something, go back to God, put it in your prayer, put your petition in, give it with thanksgiving. Thank you, God. Thank you for blessing me with this. Thank you for meeting this need, whatever it may be. And I'm telling you, God will send you a miracle. I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations with people sharing their testimony about the things that God has done for them financially, moved mountains, moved situations. I, I, I do it so much so that I am so dependent on God that I'm like, God, now, you know, I might need or I might want this, but sometimes I just don't want to pay the price for it. I'm like, God, I need you to make this on sale. Make this affordable for me. Put this in my price range. Put this in my reach. You know, like God, make this so that I feel like I'm getting a great deal for this, that I'm, I'm really investing in something. I'm not the person that is going to go out and buy lavish things. I'll, I'll, I'll thrift and I love it. And when I thrift, I find some wonderful treasures. People give to me all the time. And I know that's because God is putting upon their hearts to do so. So I appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to God to continue to do that because I am following what he says. But remember, God's time is not our time. His time is not our time. I wish I could say that it is, but it is not. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. God has placed things in my spirit, I promise you, that has taken five to 10 years to manifest. And sometimes when you're sitting on a seed or you're sitting on an egg or you're sitting with something in your belly for that long, you may feel like it's going to rot, but it doesn't. God will bring it to pass. Those things that he are, he's putting in your dreams, those things that he is telling you, it is not, it is yay and amen. And maybe you can't see it with your natural eye or it does not look the way that you want it to look. Again, let's go back to that, right? We're going to speak things that are not as if they are. And we're going to remember that our timing is not God's timing. He may not come when you want to, but we all know he's going to be there on time. And sometimes I'm like, God, in the midnight hour, where are you? Am I out here by myself? When I know that I'm not, when I know that he's there, I'm just encouraging myself in the Lord. And sometimes, and most times I am. There is an appointed time for everything. That's in Ecclesiastes 3.1. There's an appointed time for everything. There's a season for everything. There's an appointed time when everything must happen. And only God knows that timing. We don't know that. We, We do not know that time. And that's why it's so hard for us to digest when our loved ones, when it's their times to go. And when God says, you are no longer here. You're going to be gone. Your body is going to be gone. You're going to be present with the Lord. It's really hard for us to digest those times because we really feel like at those times that God is not with us because this person's physical presence is not there. Does not mean that their spirit is not with us. It can stay with us, but it's hard for us to digest that because God makes a decision to take people when they're children, when they're babies, when they're infants, when they're still seeds in our body, when they're adults. So 
because we do not know the appointed time and place, we must always just continually remember that we are dependent on him and that his time is not our time. The word says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts and my ways are not your ways, declares the Lord in Isaiah 55 and 8. It's not the same. We have to really understand that and digest it. And when I read that, it made me laugh a little bit because I'm like, you're right, God. Your thoughts are not my thoughts and your ways are not my ways. But I'm pushing to make sure that within my relationship with you, I'm learning more and more about how to align those things. How do I get rid of some of that thinking that I have that's not of God? How do I do that? How do I stay in that space and place? How do I remember those things? How do I align myself to to remember that my ways can be God's ways and they are not all ways. But I'm looking for that guidance and that direction to move me there. Because we're humans. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And when you really remember that, when you really take that on, head on and remember that, then that takes you to a whole nother space and place in your life. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. And we have to operate and move in that way. A lot of the things and most of the things that our Bible tells us those basic instructions before leaving earth are counterintuitive to what the world says. So the word says for us to give, the world says for us to keep, the word says for us to sacrifice, for us to be a servant. The world says for you to climb that ladder and get on top and no matter who you push down, You know, when you're walking with the word, you're walking with integrity. You're walking with hope. You're walking with faith. You're walking in the spirit. You're not looking at those things naturally. Remember, we're calling those things that are not as if they are. You walking around like that in the world, they think you're crazy. We need to believe the word. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. That's deep. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. 1 John 2, verse 15 to 17. That alone can take a lot to unpack. That, those, those, that, for those couple of verses alone, as you're thinking about the world and what you love in this world, And I started to think about, I'm like, God, what do I love? What do I love? What do I love? Do I love anything in this world? And I started to really start to think about the, um, some of the parables in the Bible. And if God asked me to give away everything right now, would I be able to do that and be completely dependent on God? Because some of these things that we have gathered up as treasures in this world we hold on to really tight because they're treasures and by this by the 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 emphasis of the word is something that we treasure it may even be something that we love if god asked you to let it go can you let it go it was funny that when i started to think about that then God started to, of course, put me to the test because this is this is the relationship that we have. A, a thought comes, I giggle about it, I talk to God about it, and then here comes the test, not too far behind. Would you say yes if I ask you? 
So I started to say like, you know what, God, if someone asked me for something, I just want to be able to give it to them. I remember I was in the grocery store and this lady looked at my ring and she said, oh, I really like that ring. You should give me that ring. And I just giggled and said, I like this ring too. You know, she was, she wasn't, she was a stranger. I didn't know who she was. So I, I got home and lo and behold, that ring came up missing and it was missing forever in a day. And I found it one day it had gotten stuck in the pocket of my jeans. And I don't know if you guys know, like that extra little pocket where you can go up and over. So it was stuck there. It had got smashed and I, you know, had to get it. When I found it, I was trying to bring it back to life. And God reminded me of the fact that somebody asked me for that ring. And I just, at that moment, could not see myself giving that ring away. And then it vanished and went away. And God bought it back. So I appreciate that because I did like the ring. But it brought me to a space and place where I'm like, you know what? If somebody says, I like that. I want that. Where'd you get that? I want to be that kind of person to say, you can have it. I saw my mother do it a lot of times. Like literally we were at this lady's house and she was like, I really like your purse. And my mother said, oh, this purse? Can you bring me a plastic bag? And she said, yeah. And my mother emptied the contents of her purse and gave the lady her purse. And I said, what in the world? You know why? Because it was just something that it wasn't that big of a deal. It was going to bring joy to this other person. And you know what? Sometimes I feel like those little things, not necessarily just bring joy to other people, but it also reinforces to them that God is real. Because who else is going to do that? We're supposed to show that we are Christians by the love we have one for another. And so the love we have one for another says that if I desire something and you have it, and you have it to share, that you would share that with me. So let's make sure that we are not loving anything in this world. We're not loving anything in this world. Because God says in his word, the word says, for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, comes not from the Father. It comes from the world. So we have to be really, really careful of what we put in that love category. I know we all have that love category. Oh, I love that. Oh, we, we take that word for granted so much. Just be very careful of what you put in that category of love and what you would do for it. You know, I love my daughter enough that when it was time, I gave her back to God. I said, God, I have done. I thank you for allowing me to be her mother. And I'm forever going to be her mother, of course. But for those child rearing years that I was really fully responsible for her. And at some point I had to give her back to God. You know, God will provide the sacrifice. He never asked me to take Madison up and put her, put her on a, and sacrifice her. But if he had, we would have been walking together and I would have believed that God would have provided the sacrifice. And if it was within his word and within his will, rather that my child didn't go, then that must be what it is. But I thank God that was not my testimony. Amen. So give and it shall come back to you. We sing this song in church. You know, um, and it is really important that you think about it. These are not just words. We are speaking the word, the word of God. Give and it shall come back to you. Press down, shake it together and runneth over. Give and it shall come back to you. And I believe that. I wholeheartedly believe that because I have seen it in the short time that I have been here. Um, as I am coming rapidly running towards my 50th year of life. I thank God for that. More years uh, in front of me, more years behind me than in front of me. Is that how it goes? Um, I thank God that I have been able to see this. And it's so interesting that, 
you know, when we get to this space, we need to start. I said, do the work. I want you to do it. I want this to become part of who you are. Do it. Just do it. Like Nike said, just do it. The word says that the poor will always be among us. We will always have the poor with us, according to Matthew 26 and 11. There is always going to be someone in that category of poor. So if your prayer is nobody be poor, it's always going to be somebody that's going to be at the bottom of the totem pole, no matter what. The poor is going to be with us. So what is our responsibility for someone who falls into that category? The word says, when you give to the poor, you, you lend to the Lord. And uh, I apologize for my typo, but you lend to the Lord. And that is in Proverbs 19, 17. When you give to the poor, you lend to the Lord. Can you imagine I, I have this saying that I, when people talk about things, I mean, they, they was like, man, Freddie, you do that? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just racking up my Jesus bucks. You know, I, and, and I say that jokingly, but can you imagine what that would look like if I'm giving to the poor and I'm lending to the Lord? Really? Really, God, is that what you're saying? And don't take this for granted. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers for Thereby, some have entertained angels. That's in Hebrews 12, too. I'm sure all of us have had that moment where you've seen somebody, especially people on the streets, asking for money, asking for something, looking for a handout, and they're there one second, and then you blink, and they just gone. Or you'll never see them again. Right? Don't underestimate those opportunities because you're entertaining angels. I remember um, I got to a point where I stopped carrying cash. I was like, you know what? I am just not gonna carry cash anymore. That is going to alleviate me from having to, you know, give all my money away, whatever it was I was thinking, I don't know. So I, I just stopped, stopped carrying cash. So of course, as I'm running into people, they're like, you know, hey, can I, can I have a dollar? I'm like, oh, sorry, sister, sorry, brother. I don't have no cash. Well, you know, I, I honestly believe that God is a comedian in my life. I don't know about yours, but he put me in a situation once where I was going into Family Dollar and this lady was standing outside and she said, I was wondering if you could just help me buy some food. Now, we're not standing. Jewel is right across the street, mind you. We're standing in front of Family Dollar and I said, you want to buy some food? And she said, Yeah. And I just happened to have had access to a link card. And I said, well, sure, I can get you some food. You know, come on, come in the store. You know, here's your, here's here's what you can spend. And, you know, I'll meet you at the cash register when you finish. Didn't cost me anything. Really? But that probably did something for that woman's spirit, for her family. I don't know what her situation was. But the fact that she opened up her mouth to ask for something that I was capable of giving at that appointed time, I'm like, can only be God. That can only be God. I was sitting there talking to this one lady. I'm digging in my car, trying to change my shoes because long story short, I was trying to change my shoes and um, I'm digging in my car and I'm talking to her, you know, to her, my back to her. And she says, do you have a pair of shoes in that car? that you could give me? And I looked down and didn't even notice the lady didn't have no shoes on her feet. And I said, of course I can. Had a pair of flip-flops right there. You know, and I said, here you go. Appointed place, appointed time. God is not going to put more on you than you can bear. Don't feel like he is going to put you in a position to do something that you're not able or capable of doing. Now, it may be a sacrifice. I did like those flip-flops. I did. But it was okay. They came from Old Navy. If I really wanted another pair, I'm sure I could find another pair. But the point is, appointed place, appointed time, and you were able to be a blessing. 
And I know sometimes we think about those opportunities, but we extend ourselves and people don't give back. Because I have been in that situation, in that place before, where I have given with the anticipation of giving back. But one thing that my mother taught me a long time ago, she said, don't loan anything that you can't afford to give away. So when people come borrowing, I do it with the understanding that perhaps you'll pay it back and perhaps you won't. But that's not necessarily going to change my perspective. That speaks more to you than it does about me. Because if God gave it to me and then told me that I'm supposed to give it to you, then I can't worry about how it comes back to me. The word says the wicked borrows, but does not pay back. But a righteous is generous and gives. That's in Psalms 31, 21. So the word speaks to that. So don't be surprised when that happens. Those are the wicked. They're going to borrow the money and not give it back. But, you know, I also have learned throughout my life that a lot of times people borrow and the ones that give it back are not the ones that borrowed it. So don't do something for someone in anticipation of that person doing for you. If they could have done for you the same thing you did for them, then they would have needed to borrow it from you. They wouldn't have needed to ask it of you. Remember, people are coming with a need and hoping that you can fulfill that need. Don't anticipate them to fulfill the same need that you have. God is going to bring up and it's going to come to pass a totally different way than what you anticipate that happening. It's not going to come from that person. So don't feel like, oh, I'm not going to do for him or her anymore. Because when I did and it was my turn, they wasn't there for me. They're not, they're not ever going to be there for you. That's not how any of this works. I love that saying. I say that all the time. That's not how any of this works. That's not how any of this works. We are in this world, but not of this world. That is not how any of this works. It don't work that way. If you are in a position to give, give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaken together, runneth over. Luke 6 and 38. Give. And it shall come back to you. So much so that you won't have room enough to receive it. And I can attest to that. You know, I'm at the place right now. It's anytime God is blessing me with some additional funding, I'm looking around because I know somebody coming. It's, a, it's somebody coming with a need because he didn't gave it to me to give it to someone else. <clears throat> I remember um, being able to give um, a seed, sow a seed, to one of my friends and I told him when I gave it to him God told me to give this to you but be prepared to give it away and he was like I'm not giving this away and I said I'm just telling you what the spirit already told me to tell you so I'm just agreeing with you because you might need a little confirmation in this situation and sure enough he said little by little and it wasn't even the same characters that he would normally come in his life. These were totally new people that he couldn't say, oh, I gave to you before you never gave back or whatever the ism was. This was a whole new group of people coming because he had it to give. But he only had it to give because God gave it to me and I was being obedient and blessed him to bless to be a blessing to other people. So you never know what happens in this circle of life when you're giving to people, when you're helping them out. I have a girlfriend right now that shares a story about when we were in our 20s and she was getting ready to go to nursing school and she came to me to help her buy books. Who says no to buying books for somebody for school? And she said that was the only thing that I needed to set me on a road to becoming a nurse. And had you said no, I don't know how I would have done that. I don't know who else would have helped me buy those books. And I was like, wow, God, that's amazing. Like you, you put me in that place to be able to have this intersection in her life where it was that significant that it propelled her to her career pathway. That's amazing. 
for paying for some books. Don't underestimate the things that God is whispering in your ear and telling you to do. It may seem insignificant to the overall big picture of what's going on, but it is your duty. It is your assignment. It is what God is telling you to do. Hold on to that. Listen to that. Stay in tune with that. Are you winning? Yes. Yes, you are. We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. That's in Romans 8, 27. Are you winning? Yes, we are. Not just you. Not just me. But we're winning. So you can hashtag winning in all your situations. No matter what it looks like. You are a winner and we are winning. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's us. That's us. Get that into your spirit. The word says, study the word to show thyself approved unto God. That's in 2 Timothy 2.15. Study the word. I'm telling you the best thing that I can do is speak these verses into my life. Because I find myself up against the wall. I find myself by myself a lot of times. I talk to myself a lot. That self-talk is the truth. But you know what I'm speaking? I'm speaking the word. God, you said I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the lender and not the borrower. I'm speaking that into my life. I'm speaking life. God, your word says you are going to supply my needs according to your riches and glory. Your word said you're not going to withhold no good thing from me. Speak those things into your life. Take a hold of it. It's not just a word for me. It's a word for all of us. You have the right and the authority to speak that into your life. You do not have to sit in the same space and place that you're in. Speak it. Talk it. Walk it. Do it. Just do it. Now, I'm going to ask you. If you're in need of prayer, you could text the word pray. If you would like to join Just Christ Ministries, our doors are always open. There is more than enough work to be done. We just need folks to come on into the vineyard. Put your hands to the plow and help us push. You want to join us? Text the word join. If you want to give, and I mean nothing too big or too small, text the word give. And you can do all that to 773-455-0008. Again, you can text the word pray. You can text the word join. Or you can text the word give to 773-455-0008. Before we leave, I want to say a word of prayer. As we're closing out this moment that we had together for Bible study, I hope that it has encouraged you. I hope that it has put you in a position where you see yourself winning this game. You, you see yourself winning this race. You see yourself as the winner. Even in whatever situation that you're in, you see yourself winning. You declare that you have won. You declare that you are the head and not the tail, that you are in front of the line and not at the end. No matter what your situation is, no matter where you may find yourself, no matter what is happening around you, God is with you and you are winning. All of these situations, it's raining. If it's raining right now, be prepared for the rain. Get yourself in a position where you're prepared and you're taking shelter while it's raining. You're learning from what it needs, what it means to rain on you. You're learning from those drops that's drip dropping on you. They're preparing you. They're sharpening your tools. They're moving you closer. They're increasing your faith, whatever it is. That rain is not drowning you. You are not drowning. You are winning. I'm a winner. You're a winner. We're a winner. We're winning. 
I thank you, God, for this opportunity to come before your people. I thank you, God, that this does not fall on deaf ears, that it falls on good ground. I thank you for your word and what your word says. I thank you for the opportunity to share this with other people, God, that we take a moment, God, to think about what this means in our life, but we share with other people. Press like, press share, send it out, put it in the atmosphere. Let someone else know about what we did and what we talked about on this evening. Encourage yourself, encourage someone else while you find yourself in this place. God, we know that this is not by accident. And we even thank you for the technical glitch that we experienced in the beginning, God, because we know that the enemy is real. He is real. It is real. It is a real thing. And it is trying to stop your word from going forth. But we persist and we press our way through, God. So I thank you for that. And we ask right now, God, that you just continue to keep us covered as we're coming, uh, our coming ins and our going outs, God. We ask, God, that you continue to speak to us, give us dreams. Thank you for a relationship with you. Thank you for your word that you left for us to digest, God. Thank you for the opportunity that you give us to, to lend our talents back to you, God. We thank you and we praise you, God. We take none of this for granted. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good night.